Hey friends, uh, good evening. Uh, we have a new friend joining in today. Her name is Raji and she is joining in from Singapore. Uh, one of the uh, first of such uh, guests or friends who are joining in this particular platform uh, because uh, what's what's different with this particular, uh, with this particular guest or Raji is that she's been uh, with armed services. Uh, she was uh, with Singapore Army Forces, armed forces for almost 29 years. And then she uh, quit her armed forces and then, you know, she started her second career, uh, you know, after, you know, almost uh, 29 years of stunt with Army. And, you know, she started, you know, becoming a fitness coach, a fitness freak and, you know, started training others on how to be strong. So uh, thanks a lot, uh, Raji, for joining in. Uh, first of uh, such kind of profile on our platform. And so we, we feel very honored. So we want to really know how you, uh, as a woman, uh, how was the journey as uh, you know uh, arm professional uh, in Singapore? I think I, you know country doesn't matter because it takes a lot of uh, courage, a lot of uh, you know training to get reach that particular. You get selected in armed forces, and the training is generally very rigorous. And apart from that, uh, you know career in fitness, uh, your second career. I want to see, uh, want to hear how you got into the second career, and most importantly, uh, you know the journey where you you've done this. Uh, Spartan races, uh, you know, with challenges, you know, how do you, how do you manage all this, you know, <laughs> you know, you, you need a lot of strength, what do you eat and, you know, what, what is the secret behind your energy? I mean, in India, we say boost is the secret of our energy. So what happens in Singapore? So over to you. Uh, thank you very much for having me, Ravi. Um, it's such an honor to be um, in your media. Uh, I was um, enlisted in the armed forces when I was 17. Um, I finished my O-levels, um, secondary school, and um, uh, because I saw my, I, I'm the eldest among the four, uh, four children, so I saw my dad uh, struggling uh, uh, as a sole breadwinner, so I decided that um, I'll go to work. And um, it was also his option that I get a government job because it's more stable. So then um, I joined the armed forces at the age of 17. So I went in as a contract service woman. So it was my dad who brought me to the uh, HQ to sign the contract. So um, because they do not have, I'm more of an active person. So they had vacancy only for clerks at a time, admin. So I went in as a clerk. Um, I was lucky because my commander, the unit commander was very understanding. So I got opportunity to, to not do so much of admin, but to help out in the training um, area. So continued, um, then I continued another three years. So when I wanted to get out of the armed forces, I never did because then I had um, another project like I'm going to get married, then I'm going to have children. So at the end, I served 29 years in the armed forces. It was a good experience. That is, um, I did a lot of um, attached uh, for a lot of training, a lot of physical training. And um, at one uh, point, when I was in my 30s, they were taking in uh, service women to try out as combat trainers, training officer cadet. So I'm a non-uniform, uh, non-commissioned officer. So you were given opportunity to train. So I jumped at that and I did all my IPPT. I passed and I had a three years um, training the officers. It was such a powerful moment that we trained the commission officers, you know. Um, so while I was in the armed forces, uh, because I was always been fit and I'm always like um, athletic uh, in school days, so I actually carried on with all the uh, sports activity and I was still run for the um, athletic meet like 200 meters, 100 meters, 4 times 100, and marathons, half marathons. So all the activities and all the games I'll take part because that, that's me. Um, I actually did hang up my shoes uh, on the last, my last um, athletic competition was when I was 40. Mm -hmm. So I sprained my knee on the track and I had to like give up my running shoes. So my career in the SAF uh, Armed Forces was um, mostly very positive. Uh, stress level was very high. Uh, we, uh, I was uh, mostly in the reservist unit where, you know, after you finish your NS, you got to come back for reserve activity. A lot of mobilizations and I was taken out of family quite a lot and um, so um, it was good very good and 
a little bit bad. <laughs> <laughs> A yeah. little bit compromised with the family was the only thing bad, right? Uh, because um, like my weekends sometimes I have I'll I'll bring my kids. Uh, my seal was good. I'll bring my two children and I'll say, hey, you want to sit one corner? I still have to do work, and I'll give them something to do. So <laughs> basically, my children were like you know um, with me. Um, so sports was just passion because I been always actively involving in, involved myself in um, sports so because i was very passionate about sports i did um, i did some courses like fitness instructor i did my wellness management uh, diploma um, i want to know more about uh, how to train others and myself so it was not um, it's not going to be my living because i have a good job a uh, well paid job and and i like i love my job so sports is something that it was just um, recreational and also because i trained my i wanted to train my children uh, to be best sports people so uh, that's why i took up the course and all that and um, in 2010 there were policy changes so i was one of the last few left in the admin and in uniform so they've already phased out um, and more non uniform personnel were uh, assumed the appointments clerical appointments and stuff okay so in 2010, um, the, my management called and said, you know what, uh, we have to give you early retirement. I had another two more years, good two more years to go, but they said you have to take the early retirement. So um, as a contract serviceman previously, every three years, six years contract, you will get a rigidity. So only the last six years of before my retirement that uh, they had a better scheme, so we don't have to... They won't pay, but your interest, you know, nice perks. So I only was left with that six years of uh, um, graduate, which is not much. So I had to take the, the uh, retirement. So I was 46 when I retired, 45 in 2010. Now in 2010, um, so when I applied for a job, I couldn't get, I was like 29 of years of service was so relevant in 29 and after 29 I became so irrelevant uh, meaning whenever I go for interviews and um, when they see my experience oh oh you are, I'm sorry uh, your experience uh, is not so valid in our working context so suddenly I became um, irrelevant to, <laughs> to the world you know I, it was it, it was very depressing of course because I couldn't land a job and it was also because I was already like uh, 45, uh, going to become 46. And then at the same time, I gained weight. I gained, um, I was on a hormonal replacement therapy because I was going through menopause. So I gained 29 kgs because of the therapy. So I had a retirement in May. I gained weight August, September. I was already like 29 kgs. And I... One, depressed because I can't get a job. Two, I was so fat. So, and then the next thing was, I was looking for a job proactively, sending like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, uh, of uh, application. It did never down into me that actually I can pursue fitness. Anyway, I was too fat to pursue fitness. Okay. So then my daughter was getting married in 2011. Then um, it was actually her wedding photo in in January 2011 that I saw. I know I was fat, but I don't post for any photos. You know, I was always behind the curtain. And my children were so sweet. They will never say, Mommy, you're fat. They will say, um, you know, okay, you don't wear this dress. Oh, oh, um, you wear this. Oh, you know, they are too nice. <laughs> too nice. Because they know I was going to a phase. Um, I'm trying to get job and all that. So it was the photo that, that, that she collected that's like, oh my God, I... I was beyond recognition. I was such a pumpkin. Mm -hmm. And the best part is, I was supposed to wear a nice gown. I, I ended up wearing a sari, that's the best, right? Cover myself. So it was that photo that actually woke me up. And I said, you know what? It's a shame that I even have a certificate that says I'm a fitness trainer. I'm a personal trainer. But actually, I'm so fat. So I put myself on a mission to, to lose weight. Um, it was not easy because then I was already like uh, 40 something, metabolism down, 
plus I was um, in a different zone, I would say. So I went into a very strict regime. Uh, I will wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning. I will go for a run. Uh, the reason why I go for a run early because it will take like about two hours to complete even five kilometers because I was hardly could, could, uh, could walk. And also because my neighbors will see me. So I don't want my neighbors to know that, you know, I'm, I'm struggling because I've always been running and stuff. So I'll go out at about 4.30 and I'll come back home before the day breaks. Then I'll rest. I'll have... Um, and I was also going through financial difficulties because I was the one who brought the major paycheck uh, to my friend because I was a very good paycheck I had. So we were running into financial difficulties already because um, the income is gone. So um, I'll have simple breakfast and then 12 o'clock I will do kickboxing. So how do I do kickboxing? So I have uh, DVDs. So I asked my friend to record uh, the DVDs. So I'll just put in and all my exercise and everything was done inside the house in the very quiet in the four walls. So my mission is to get my weight down to at least um, 17, and I did it in six months. Uh, I was on a very strict diet, no salt, no sugar. That was very extreme. I went very, very extreme. So I got my weight down 19 kgs. And then I was actively looking for a job. Um, then I was hit with... Uh, with uh, so I was all good. I went back to gym. Um, so I, 70 kgs, I was able to go to the gym because then I can fit into the leg press machine because previously I couldn't really go, oh no, because my hips were so big. So I start training and then I lost um, another five, so I was about 65. So of course then I started applying for a job. I said, maybe I can just apply for, you know. Um, I was very insecure because I lost touch um, for some time in the fitness, though I do a little bit of uh, gym instructor part-time. Um, I did quite a lot actually. So gym instructor sometimes just floor management and stuff like that. So literally teaching someone, it's like, never thought of it. So um, so then uh, I came out of it. I lost weight. I was uh, now uh, 65, 60, 65, 64. Then I had I was hit with a big bang that I found, I found out that my ex was uh, cheating on me. So the marriage was literally over. Oops. In 24 hours of finding out. So then my, my daughter already left uh, to live in UK. She married um, an English man. And my son left to pursue his career in Australia. So now I'm left alone. And then uh, this hit me. So I'm now, I climbed the ladder to to, to get, go back into the mainstream. But I was hit with this. I um, fell into depression. Uh, it was a very hard journey. Um, I struggled a lot in the year 2011 uh, to a point that um, financially I was burdened because um, um, I had no food to eat. Uh, I couldn't talk about it to anybody else. Um, so, uh, and the news of my divorce uh, that um, because I was given an ultimatum, two things either I said okay for the divorce or I have to live in with the partner, uh, my ex's partner. So I chose, uh, no, I want to divorce. So, but it was a very difficult uh, decision because I had no job and uh, I'm depending on my ex. So when I uh, told my family, I did not get uh, the support that um, basically what um, my close people said that you should shut your mouth and you should stay at home. Since you got no job, let him do whatever he wants. You just stay and, and, and make do with your living. So... Of course, I cried, cried, cried. And I said, you know what? Why should I be doing? I, I look good. I should pursue my fitness, you know? Why should I, you know? Um, so I gathered all my guts. I said, you know what? I will go and study. I will went through studies. and But this, this, the breakdown in the marriage is 27 years of marriage. It's not easy. It, it actually did destroy me, I should say. I couldn't move on. So uh, to a point that... Um, um, so I had to go into, we lost the house because of debts and all that. I had to go into women's shelter. Uh, so the family services said, you know what, you need, you need a place to stay where you can get you a woman's shelter where uh, battered women, abused and battered women, because at one point I was abused, later stage. So I had to get out of it. So I was asked to go uh, to the shelter. shelter. So I went to the shelter and looked. 
it bent down into me that whatever problem I have is nothing compared to those ladies who are in the shelter and those children who were abused and beaten up. I was like, it was, it was in my mind. Someday I must do something, but it was too much for me. And I said, you know what? I choose to go back to my place. It's okay if somebody else is living in the house. I will make sure that I will make things happen for myself quietly. So, um, so I went for security guards course because the family services we had counselors, career counselors. So I said any job will do. So they gave me uh, send me for course. So no ego because I need to start somewhere. So I went for the security guard course. And then one of the thing is I have to uh, join a security company of their choice and work for one month. That's the sponsorship, you see. So I went to Certi Cisco. Uh, I couldn't do night shift because I was on medication. Um, okay, one thing. In TV, uh, in, in this media is the one I'm sharing this. So uh, I've not told anybody about this depression and the medication, but you are the first people I'm telling because I'm fine to talk about it now. So I couldn't do night shift. So they gave me day shift. So when I went for the interview, it's just a formality interview. But I just brought my my resume and my certificate I just brought. So I went, it's only a security guard um, interview. So officer, you came for security guard? I said, yeah, yeah. Said, but you don't look like a security guard. I said, it doesn't matter. I just have to finish up one month and I have to get a job. So he said, you know what, come, did you get your, did you bring your resume? I said, yeah, I did. So I just gave him the file, like big file of all my certification. He just said, you know what, why are you in this job? We have better job for you. So he had, so then I realized that the irony was I came out from the armed forces, but Sydney Cisco was outsourced to train the recruits for IPPT, individual physical proficiency tests. And then they said that you are the best uh, candidate. Luckily, the officer is here for the interview. So I went and saw the officer for the interview. Um, he's, a, he's a CEO for that, uh, for that training uh, area. So he asked me, um, okay, Tell me why should I employ you? You're already 46. When I can employ young people with young blood, why should I employ you? I was actually stuck. And I said, you should employ me because I've got experience. You know, this is the attitude I took. And you should employ me because I am experienced. I have got 20 years of experience. So he said, yeah, well, but you're old. As you know, I will learn and I've got a lot of experience under my belt because I then had, um, I was doing boxing coaching. Um, pretty much I had a lot of experience um, in sports uh, as a competitor, as an um, um, aerobic instructor. As, as a, I did not go into professional boxing um, competition, but I thought I had a good mentor who taught me how to box and I learned everything about boxing and I was practicing boxing myself. So then he said, Okay, since you said your experience, I believe you because I see your certificate fine. But what is your 2.4 run? Uh, 2.4 run. Because I never timed myself. So I was like, mm, I just gathered, okay, 46. I said, uh, 15 minutes. No, I won the 2.4 run in 12 minutes. 12 minutes, 2.4 run. It's six rounds, the stadium. So I said, Okay, no problem. Can you pass all the station? No problem. Station, no problem. Sit up, no problem. 2.4, but in my heart, they don't make it worth it. Oh, okay. But two weeks. Two weeks? I took up the challenge and I ran and practiced. I could do 12 minutes. It, it's like a flash. In two weeks, I trained myself. I said, no, I must get this job because this is the break for me. So I didn't realize that I trained my running on one day. Of course, I can do 12 minutes. I trained on my static station on one day. But these two are going to be on one test. Sure. So I did not do it together. So when I went for the test, I did all the static ace. Pick up, got jump, ace. So when I came to running, I was like running and running. I knew that I cannot make it because I was already tired from the static station. So it was very conventional, only one timekeeper who takes down how many rounds and a timekeeper with a stopwatch. And the CEO was like, every time I look at him, I was like, oh no, you know, you know, that, that, that fear in me that I will I will not make it. So at the 20 meters, I was running. I said, speed girl, speed girl, speed girl. But the speed never came. I said, no, like, like you know, the, 
the, the tortoise trying to chase the rabbit and say, no, I will do it. Never mind, even if you die, just, just do it, you know. I think I saw the time people like, my heart broke and I was at the verge of crying because I knew that I didn't make it. I didn't make it uh, to 12 minutes. So when I look at him, I ask him, he said, I could just see 13 minutes, 20 seconds. One minute, 20 seconds, overshot. I said, forget it. So I told myself, you know what, girl? It's okay, you try. I was like, still talking to myself, okay, what? You try. And then he said, come to my office tomorrow, 8.30. Before I change my mind, get lost. 8.30, I'm going to get a job. 8.30, he's going to give me another two weeks to, to get 12 minutes. I wasn't sure. So I went next morning at 8.30, so scared. He just gave me a contract. The best part is, in the contract, it says senior trainer. Not trainer, just not normal trainer, senior trainer. Well, I was going back to the army again from another... Uh, another agency to train the recruits. So I went to the island uh, to also go to train uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the recruits uh, for about six months. Then I was back to the uh, back to the reservists to train them. So from there, I got the second break. Uh, the salary wasn't that good. It's just a basic, but whatever, that's my, I started like that. Then I got my break. Uh, somebody talent scouted, meaning they, they knew, uh, some of them in the forces knew last time I was a sports person. Then my big break came where the ladies' gym offered me a senior training manager's job, and that was a, the best job I've ever done. Then I got over by another ladies' gym because I was then already like uh, super good. Um, so I was brought over by another um, ladies' gym uh, as an assistant manager. Okay, well. now then in the meantime, I told myself that I will, I, of course, the matrimonial house was sold. It was, uh, there was debts by, uh, incurred by my ex and all that. A lot of uh, credit companies were after me because there were some guarantors signed out by me, but somehow. So whatever it is, I got my uh, divorce done and I bought my house six months. Six months, I worked day and night. I, sometimes I, uh, I don't have much money to eat. I'll go to temple to, to get food. Uh, sometimes friends will say, hey, you know what? Not many will know my problem because I don't talk about it. Uh, because I outside, it's always been my case that I look very strong. So people think that I don't have a problem. So I cannot cry my heart out to anyone. I'm always crying silently, in the closed doors, in the bathroom. But I'm okay, done. I'm back. Back in action. From uh, my game. So, uh, so it was in my mind. So what I did is, um, so I when I was... As an as a manager, and of course the gyms were charging quite a lot for membership, uh, housewives, some housewives, a lot of housewives want to lose weight, but they can't afford. Then the shelter was in my mind. So what I did is I did, took a bold step. You know what? I've gone through enough. I had, I went through hunger. I went through uh, people shun me. People, uh, you know, people don't, don't invite me because I'm a divorcee. So I told myself, you know what? Resign the job, go and help the shelter. So I, I did that. I just resigned. I was earning. I resigned. Now I have my house, right? Even if I eat or don't eat, I have a house. That's what. That's important. Then actually, I reached out to a couple of women. So I started my very hard journey. I would say I started because I wanted to help uh, women. The only way I know to help empower women to get their confidence back, to get back into the main main uh, community is to fitness. Uh, there's no other way I knew uh, not to lectures nor to any agencies because people are charging money. So address their physical issues, mental issues, get them out of their comfort zone, uh, equip them with, with strength and uh, talk to them and get them out of the rut, advise them, get help, family services, tell them you can go there, I get all the list of where they can get help. So um, that's how I started. So so my my clientele are mostly housewives. Uh, because first, they can't afford uh, big-time clients, uh, big-time trainers. They can't afford membership in the, in the gym. So I will go 
North, because I also starting, right? I will go to North, East, West, South for $20. But you will say it's cheap. You yourself don't have money. But you know what? When I go in and I come out of the house and I will see this smile from here to here, I say, Miss Raji, I didn't know I can do it. And every time when I go in, I can see that they are smiling and that make me full. So my worries, I have no, it, it's such a fulfilling uh, journey and I have no regrets that uh, actually I actually designed and I started building. Uh, I'm so in love with the, with the job. So if you ask me what my challenges are, I'm asking the question myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very tough journey as a, as a woman because this is a male dominant um, career. And I was already in my 40s, so I have to be good. In fact, I'd be five times better than the younger generation. So I did a lot of research, a lot of studies, a lot, a lot, because I must be super good. I cannot be below the water. I got to be, I have to float. So um, I did a lot of courses. I, uh, I joined classes. I go for other trainers and to see the latest market stuff I did. And, um, and then, of course, I trained myself. So last year, I decided to make a difference because I always hear that, you know what, age or, you know, you cannot, well, you are, I was then already, what, um, 55. So what's next? What's my challenge? What's next? I'm enough of running marathon. So boring. Enough of, uh, I don't go to track yet because of my knee. Uh, when it twisted, it was a nightmare. So I've not done competitive um, athletic. I've not yet. Uh, I'll be starting anyway. So I thought, why not uh, do a uh, from Goa for holiday in Britain. Back, just did a runs in the day. All the tracks I ran, I just blindly went for these partners. And my time was good. I it was a, a couple of injuries, but not so bad. And then I trained, and I said, "Hey, you know what? I'm going to go uh, for the elite." So I trained um, for my time and I wanted to go for the elite, but I had, um, I tore my ACL and my meniscus while training. So when I recovered and I straight away went into a Spartan Super, which was uh, 13 kilometers and 26 obstacle. And then in November, I did the Spartan Beast, which is uh, training one kilometers in Malaysia and uh, 30 obstacle. So I got my trifecta last year. So. There's nothing you can't achieve if you put your mind to it. Superb. <laughs> Hats off. I mean, like, I, I've had guests, you know, uh, friends who've joined this particular platform and they did have, uh, you know, ups and lows uh, like anybody else in life. You, yours was, was uh, like rock bottom. I mean, uh, you know, somebody losing the house, staying in, uh, you know, a shelter, then coming back. Uh, joining, I mean, taking up a job. I mean, intention was to take up a security job, but yeah, God, God, uh, wish you, you know, yes. much more. Uh, so thanks to all that particular person who recognized that, you know, you you deserve better, and you know, uh, directed you to the right person. And then you you made the second career, and you know, you, you got as a trainer, and you again, you know, like this is this is like a roller coaster journey, and again you decided to quit the job because you were not, you know happy with it you you felt you can do more and you know you decided to help women and uh, yeah with a lot of these expertise uh, i've seen a lot of people you know prize themselves high you know because they've got a story behind it but you didn't do that either i mean you, you basically said that i will do it at a reasonable cost you've got a home so all you need is to you know spend your time and you know uh, exploring or you know sharing your uh, your your experience with others with a nominal fee I think, you know, that that's what is passion, you know, when, when it comes to passion and commercialization of what you have, passion is something where you drive it with a nominal fee, okay, so that, you know, you, you're still happy with what you're doing, you know, you're, you're uh, inspiring people around and there's a small fee to it where you can, you know, just sustain. 
and business is where you know your your like intent is to like make money for whatever efforts you're putting so awesome <laughs> so first guest who has got this roller coaster journey and you know uh, stayed in a shelter you know losing your home and then you know uh, having a bounce back awesome bounce back i mean really really admire what you've done and the courage to quit another job i mean like, who does that <laughs> after after seeing all this you know uh, quitting a job again you know is yeah. it takes guts the sad faces um, were in my mind it was just bothering me so when i sleep i will see this children uh, this ladies crying and you know i was like you know what i'm i i i'm i'm okay now you know i i i'm physically and mentally strong so i have to help them uh, you know only people who were put into distress will understand another another's you know um, feelings um, no causes or no no amount of lectures can help anyone unless you yourself has gone through those moments you can relate so i just went back um i would have done this if not for my best friend uh, my best friend who is also now my husband he amazing because when i said i'm going to do that he said you just got a job and you're going to do this and i said you know what i mean you know uh he said go for it girl i will be behind you go for it so he was my killer he he is he is still my killer he is he drove me to the to the height super good one awesome journey so we also have some rapid fire questions so that we get to know you well are you all set praji yes okay So the, your first question: What are you most passionate about? Passionate about uh, living in the present moment. Uh, yeah, living in the present moment, enjoy life. Cool. Who do you text the most apart from your husband? He's the only one I text. <laughs> <laughs> happy, not happy. only him yeah only him yeah, yeah it, it can be a girlfriend you know it it can be a friend who's a girl you know whom you text and you know tell everybody everything saying that this guy you know didn't like my breakfast you know today he didn't talk to me no no such friends no. who are like you know tearing your shoulder uh, not much not every no? day i i do say hi and all that but not no don't complain Don't do gossip once in a while, but not not every not day. That. It's only him. Complain, don't complain. Complain about others, everything, heartbreak, everything. It's him. Yeah. Super. Yeah. Who's blessed you or him with with this mentality? You're blessed to have him, or he's blessed to have you. I think both are blessed. Both of us, uh, we are very good uh, support. We have very good support. We support each other very well. Complement each other very well. Super. your favorite thing uh, you do as a kid favorite thing i do as a kid <laughs> throw stones at people <laughs> uh, my flat i like to throw stones and you know water bubble you know, fill up the uh, packets of water and just water bomb we call it water bomb yeah and just feel very happy if it breaks on somebody's head <laughs> 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 So is that allowed there i mean in singapore i mean in no. india yeah we we do it in holi because no. that's the occasion which is like you know uh, you know uh, everything is maaf you know you can do all these crimes so what about singapore so the court then of course is cheap right so no it's all done in the in the sneaky way, way. that's yeah <laughs> not here so yeah so what what makes raji laugh aloud where you know the neighbor can also hear it um anything i am a very happy go lucky person you can just make me laugh any jokes and uh yeah <laughs> it's it, my profession doesn't correlate with my character because people think that fitness trainers are very strict i'm full of nonsense actually <laughs> it's just fun yeah 
So does your son in law comes back and you know uh, do you receive these complaints from your daughter saying that you know bec- mom because of your fitness I'm you know getting all these uh, yes from <laughs> yeah. yes my uh, my daughter does like oh, soon I'm going to be but they were fit once but now she's busy with the children and all that uh, my son does he said won't you even rest mummy you just put me under a lot of pressure like my 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 friends asked me your mom she never looked like she's 50 plus she looks like she's always 30 it's like why mom <laughs> yeah. where, where do you want to see yourself uh, 10 years from now what next 10 years from now yeah okay i want to maybe have a farm house my dream uh, a big house with a nice garden is retired retired and do gardening and just Raji yeah so we like to put about yeah so gardening and farmhouse so yeah do do share with your friend uh, this particular video after the show so i'm sure uh, all these things yes. will come true quickly yes okay uh, so what what is your mantra like you know you've been a trainer you you are uh, disciplined yourself while you're in armed forces so what was your fitness mantra to get discipline so if you have to get discipline into ravi so what would you do i would tell ravi that you know what ravi you can sit all you want and cry there's only you got to good get the job done get up get your shoulder square and walk the journey no backtrack that's what i said <laughs> so is move on charge on warriors will never stay down after a fall they get up quickly they keep their shoulders square and charge on to the next mission i'm an army girl right so this the, is what the first thing i did as soon as i came to the show was like yeah shoulder straight back straight <laughs> you have a personality on the other side who's like you know fit and fine i'm like okay i cannot be relaxing right so i'm like yeah i'm oh i'm trying to act fit the entire show raji so you have to compliment me after this yes you <laughs> are you look so mm, yes <laughs> okay what what is that uh, one thing you want to do every day you wish you want to do every day you you mentioned about gardening any anything else you want to do uh one thing that i want to do every day is to make sure i have my coffee and that half an hour just be in my zone just be in the present that is what i adopted um 5 years ago and i think that really keeps you calm um first thing in the morning get a cup of coffee and just be in the zone no no messages nothing just be you and say it's a good day and give a smile and then you start your day good one so you you also do meditation and yoga something like that or i don't know why i can't do meditation but uh i basically can zone out like um, have the tv on and i'll just sit and i'll just <laughs> i can just be somewhere else yeah so that is my um zone out moment so who influenced the most in your life which transformed you as a fitness freak or you know uh, made you get into armed forces and you know be the personality you are so who is that who has influenced you for this particular journey this starting them i will say it's my it's the the negative uh, uh my childhood wasn't a great one and i think that i told myself that i have to be fit physically and mentally for me to overcome uh, all the weaknesses that i saw the plight um of my of my mom so i i got myself like um i have to be strong so it was like it was it started from young itself that i have to be strong because i have to be the one who can take care of myself so um inspired you know yeah. I, i think it just within natural so what what is the tv channel you you really flaunt when you're free what Now, do you watch on tv netflix <laughs> the netflix series yeah that's my there those are my yeah 
so do yes. you all so do you again get into netflix and all still see the fitness uh, something related to your passion or you chill out i chill out uh, i chill out uh, chill out me means uh, you basically relax entertain yourself i go for movies okay so this one thing that i don't is to wait for people you know like hey you know what you want to go for movies okay wait i will tell you later like, i i want to go for movie go to the theater book the ticket and just watch i'm very good at entertaining myself so if i want to listen to music i will listen if i feel like okay what tomorrow i feel like going for a walk in um, putti mahil i'll go and let's say call my girlfriends like you want to go if they say uh and if they don't give me an answer by 7 o'clock i'm already planned right i will still go so yeah yeah we have some clarities there it. yeah we have something yeah. in common there <laughs> yes 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 So yeah. now with with this personality what what are the best compliments you have received uh that uh i look young mm-hmm. and i've got i'm a ball of energy i bring positive uh, outlook in people and um, whenever they are with me they forget their their problems their worries and i'm very honored to be that person that when you see me it's like that one hour you see me is like fun and and you can actually talk to me um a lot of my clients talk to me uh they for them that's the time out to mm-hmm. to do something for themselves um yeah so how are you hosting a dinner if ravi comes home what what would your home look like and what would be served to ravi raji as host um, those will be very cozy and um, raji is very good with fish curry okay there's a combination and a uh, very good with pasta oh so fish curry pasta and uh, naan naan <laughs> i can't do i buy <laughs> rare combination buy. okay naan pasta and with a fish curry <laughs> yes. a good one you know something you know somebody is not right you are worth trying it so friends if you love fish curry and you love pasta and you've never tried combination of it please do try it <laughs> if you have to save somebody uh, from fire house fire uh, you know so let's say you know one of your neighbor's house is on fire so what would you do would you call the fire service or would you go ahead and attempt to make with your experience i will shout out to my lungs out to everyone i don't know i can scream for help and probably i will get grab water first i'll be the first one to to help them and i say hey you know what get your ambulance or police or what but i will be the one who will throw water because i cannot just sit there and um let the house burn wait for the ambulance wait for the police no i will be the one and if i have to pull someone out uh, let's say there's a lady inside or a child inside then i think i will go in and I'll get them out so like for me I'm at a stage where life is good but if I have to sacrifice myself to help someone why not because I've seen enough uh, I'm in a better place so yeah so good nice nice uh, connecting with you Rajesh so with this experience what would you do if you become the minister of you know, Singapore or if I become a minister first is to see make sure the shelters are well taken care of and uh, more more fundings are given to make it look better than than a depressing place um get more people to come and help mm-hmm. uh yeah shelter is always in my mind because the uh, because of the residents and um i've also seen shelters in other places other places uh, travel quite a bit now um I think it's quite a lot of improvement can be done in South Asian people. You you live there, you you been there, so you know what what it takes. Yes. What is the pain yes. out there? Good one, good one, Raji. I mean, it's an honor having you on this particular show. So, friends, yes. do connect with Raji. Uh, definitely, I mean, I cannot say it is just an inspirational story, but. it's a it's a roller coaster ride it's it's a true example of how a woman you know 
with lot of success running into a profession which you know everybody admire you know people feel that that profession is the strongest women are the strongest when they are in armed forces then getting down into depression you know losing the family losing home getting into shelter house then again bouncing back then again quitting life because she wants to you know follow her passion so awesome journey i mean one of its kind in this particular uh, you know work tv one of its kind i'm sure nobody has has seen this particular such journey or heard about such journey uh, earlier so I, no doubt your friends recommended that you should be on this particular show so oh, thank, thank thanks you. to your friends uh, who have recommended you over here and thanks a lot for spending time and uh, definitely nice meeting you if i land in singapore you'll be the first person i will meet oh thank you yeah. definitely no not for the pasta and the fish curry i'm a vegan right now but yeah if plans changes oh, definitely okay. <laughs> you will take a vegan fish curry i'll find i'll find out how to make a vegan fish curry <laughs> good one <laughs> so thank you thanks a lot and thanks to all the family members thanks to your kids who have like supported you though you are going through the tough uh, rough phase thanks to your new friend who is now your life partner everybody who is you know been part of your journey and thanks to that special friend who directed you to the right you know your resume to the right person i i think that guy changed the, your story a bit otherwise you know it it would have been uh, lower the yeah. thing so yeah yeah every person i i believe can make a difference you know that that's a small twist there a small gear change change somebody's life so yeah. friends thanks a lot for joining us and watching this video thank you thank you raji great great uh, meeting you